Hey guys, so a lot of you have left us comments and questions about how we tamed Pillow, um, our budgie, so quickly. <laughs> um, literally day one, he was uh, on our fingers and obviously he's very tame and very friendly now, but um, it happened very quickly. So a lot of people were wondering how we did it. Some people think, oh, it's a fluke. We just happened to get a really laid back uh, parakeet. Which budgie. I've actually said in the comments when people have asked how did you tame them? I, I did say that, I have said that he is, was a naturally tame bird. To some degree. To yeah. some degree, yeah. I, mean, right. I think that's definitely part of it. So the first thing is, yeah, it's the demeanor of the, of the budgie. So sometimes budgies will be much more friendly and tame than others. They're just and like people. Just the way it is. Yeah, you're not gonna know necessarily. Um, we have no advice on that, how to pick <laughs> your budgie. Just pick the one that appeals to you. One thing I will say is you pick a young one. Right, that's step that, two. That was something, yeah. <laughs> that's step we're two. We're so organized here right. in, our, in our delivery. But that was thing, one thing when we went into the pet store, we looked for the youngest looking bird we could find. Right, where the, the little stripes on the head, um, the more stripes they have, the younger they are. So if their head is completely covered in those little black stripes, it means they're very, very young. So if you take, uh, if you get a younger bird, um, you're more likely to get one that's uh, you're able to tame easier just because they're obviously not as set in their ways. And our previous budgie, which we had many years ago, was the same situation. Day one, uh, they hopped on our finger, you know, um, and were very tame in the same situation. they We got them very young with a lot of little stripes, bands, <laughs> I think they're called, on their head, and they probably were uh, generally a friendly, tameish bird to begin with, so we lucked out both times. Oh, and both birds, our previous bird and Pillow, were purchased at a pet store. So it's not like we they're hand raised or anything like that. Right. They're just your normal pet store bird. Um, our next bird will likely be a hand raised bird, so it'll probably be tamed very early on just based on that. Third piece of advice I guess we can throw in. A lot of people say, don't touch your bird right away. Let them sit in the cage for a week or two before you touch them. And I understand the logic behind that. And if we had to do it all over again with Pillow, um, we would change things, I'm sure. We definitely don't want to chase Pillow around. At the same time, getting them acclimated to you very quickly, especially when they don't know what's going on, we don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. We don't want to traumatize them, but at the same time, showing that you're not a predator, you are a friend right away, mm -hmm. by getting them to hop on your finger right away, then they become, in our opinion, at least in our experience, um, calmer and, and more tame quickly. Well, I honestly think of it as when you when you have a new kid in school, you he goes straight into the classroom, he sits with the other kids, and he just becomes part of the class. He doesn't spend a week standing outside the door, standing in the back of the room observing, and then right. another week Where just everyone kind of, kind of ignores them and... Right. He's, he's immediately just taken into the fold and just treated as one of everybody else, which, again, you know, the, the temperament of your particular bird might yield different results than we've gotten with Pillow. But in our personal experience with the pillow and our bird that we had a long time ago, um, just immediately being hands-on and getting them acclimated to the situation rather than isolating them in the cage has done really, really well for right. us. Right, it's worked for us. Yeah. Um, we can't say it'll work for everybody, but it'll work for us. And again, I think it also worked because it was a young bird. Right. If you have an older bird, like you adopt or someone gives you an older bird or you just happen to purchase a bird that's, you know, slightly older, your situation may be a little different. Right. In that case, um, I mean, we can't offer any personal experience of that because right. our birds have always been young, but that might be, in a, you know, you might want to take a different approach in, in that sense with, right. you know, giving them a little more time and space to And from to. the videos I've seen in, in terms of like acclimating them slowly, what other people have recommended, which I think makes perfect sense, is to just be around their cage for a prolonged period of time. At the beginning, don't engage the bird, don't look at the bird, and they just get sort of used to you being around them. And then slowly over time, your chair can get a little closer, you can put your hand in the cage without touching them. Because oftentimes, especially if you have a bird who's older that um, is a little skittish, you put your hand in or near the cage, they'll start flapping around wildly and things like that. So you have to sort of show them that you're not gonna harm them, but do it slowly in terms of days and weeks even, mm -hmm. um, slowly but surely acclimating your bird to you and their new environment. Another thing that we found is incredibly helpful in terms of, of 
getting pillow to be comfortable around our hands because hands are something that you know can be <laughs> hands, uh, hands. <laughs> hands are something that can be very <laughs> very uh, scary for birds because that's how you lash out like if you're just up near a bird with your head or body they at least pillow and a lot of birds we've seen don't tend to be they don't tend to feel as threatened as when you have hands but one good way we found um, that it's incredibly effective is finding their favorite treat which in pillow's case and seems to be a lot of budgies is spray millet and if you have spray millet you can oftentimes get them onto your finger so they can eat the spray millet and show them that again, your hand that's holding the spray millet isn't gonna harm them. Your hand that they're perching on is not gonna harm them, so they tend to... Hands mean treats. <laughs> right, exactly. They tend to be very happy about that. Um, and they get used to your hands and seeing that they're safe and not gonna harm them, and they mean treats. Um, at the same time, one suggestion is, uh, in order to, to make it even more effective, is not to not feed them, but if you've just put new seeds in their cage or you've just fed them, it may not be as effective than if you, like we feed Pillow in the morning um, and his seeds stay out all day and, and we don't keep seeds in his cage, we keep pellets in his cage. So if he wants to have them, he can, mm -hmm. but at the same time, obviously he prefers seeds and his, his greens, leafy greens and his fruits and things. <laughs> Um, so he will oftentimes wait for that. So he'll be hungrier in the afternoon or evening um, and before feeding him is often a good time to use the spray millet because he's hungry. In moderation. In moderation, Obviously, right. Just, You're not going to starve your bird to do it. Well, and also just the, the, the amount of millet right. in moderation. No, it's just a treat, you know, to, to get him acclimated to your hand. It's not in place of food. Right. It's not, you know, going to spoil his dinner. And that's another thing is that if you don't do it frequently, oftentimes they view it as a treat and they will come to you. So these are some ways we've found to be exceptionally effective with the spray mailer. And another thing, if your budgie has a tendency to bite or nip, um, Pillow is not a biter, but there's been a few phases he's gone through. You think of them as adolescent rebellion, right. maybe. Or he's, he's gotten a little nippy, or if you if you put your hand up for him to hop on, he'll start opening his beak. It's kind of that, that warning of, right. you know, I, I don't want to get on your hand. And once in a while, he there there has been times where he's actually gone down and nipped at your hand. The number one thing to not do is take your hand away because that teaches them that if I nip or bite or lash out, then people are going right. to go away and leave me alone. Right. And you know you don't don't retaliate or anything yeah. like that. Don't yell at them. Don't yell. Curse. There's no. no no negative no. repercussions you just leave your hand there and it just teaches them that nipping or trying to bite doesn't yields nothing right <laughs> and some people say that oh i can't like not move my finger when my budgie bites me because they bite really hard if they're biting you really hard it's because they're obviously scared parakeets at least from what we've seen tend to let you know they're going to bite. Like they will mm -hmm. open their mouth, they will, right. they you know. Right, do the warning, like a dog growl right. or something. Right, so if you respect that, then they won't actually bite you. Um, and so it's paying attention to those cues, and that way you're not in the situation of getting bit, pulling back, and then learning that I can bite this person, mm -hmm. and they will do what I want them to do, which is leave. Mm -hmm. um, you, if you get near them and they open their mouth, just don't go any further. And again, you're still building that communication, like, they're telling you they don't want to be held right now, they're afraid of you, and then you can start to, again, build that bond, build that trust, build that communication. And another thing I think that builds trust that we've found is generally being communicative. Like, when Pillow wants to come out of his cage, I think I've got footage of it, he'll hop down to the bottom of the cage and run along the bottom yeah, back and forth. Back and forth in front of the And for us to gate. acknowledge it and open his cage so he can come out, so he knows that there's a level of communication between us. So if you notice things that your bird is doing, um, and you can sort of acknowledge that and they understand that oh look if I do this they do that and you know so that they understand what the rules are so to speak they understand you know well and like any animal like a dog you know if you, if they learn if they if I do a certain thing and it yields a certain result then you know they learn and I think that again having communication with your animals and them understanding that you understand them to some degree, just again, builds that sort of bond. Mm -hmm. And I think one final thing that in our experience, I think has helped Pillow become tame quickly is the fact that we leave the cage door open and have done so from the very beginning. So he immediately feels rather than feeling sort of walled off in a cage and also feeling sort of territorial, territorial like right. this, is, this is my space and that out there is not my space. He's kind of just got, has the whole room to himself to feel like 
you know, he's part of the flock. Like we're all sitting around on right. the couch. He's welcome to come out and join us. And he will frequently fly and land on our feet and you right. know, fly on he's, the sofa and go away when he wants to, come when he wants to. Right. So I think in, in our experience, at least with him, I think it, it helps him feel like he is just part of the flock and, right. and he can be out with us at any at any point. And another thing with uh, just leaving the cage open so that Pill can come and go is, well, that's Pillow's space. Pill has his own space, so if mm -hmm. he doesn't want to be touched and petted and bothered, he can just go straight back into his cage, right. up onto his perch, and you know, he's just there. Uh, and when he wants to come out, he can come out. He's out. Yeah, so. He's out right now. I would, say, well, I, would, I would say he spends about half his day out of the cage and half his day in the cage. So I think having, you know, giving them that freedom. And the downside of that is there is poop on things that you right. do have to stay on top of and clean up because budgies poop a lot. And I'm sure there's people out there who are gonna say, there's no way I want a bird having free reign in my house to poop wherever he wants. Um, we've been lucky in that Pillow, basically he's either on his jungle gym or on the TV table um, or on the TV itself. Like the, the, Those are the places he likes to hang out. So it's easy to clean up poop off of a hard surface. He doesn't hang out on the sofa. He doesn't hang out on the floor. Um, you know, the places where the poop is harder to clean up. And another thing is, we had debated early on whether or not to leave his flight wings, because I guess when we bought him, his wings were clipped, mm -hmm. so we couldn't fly very well. We found actually he's much happier and actually much more tame, which we thought would be the opposite, right. with wings so that yeah. he can fly, so then he can come and go as he pleases, so if, you know, he just feels more com confident and comfortable yeah. because he knows he can fly away if he doesn't like something. Which the, the funny thing is, he virtually never uses his wings to stay away from us. No. Like there's times where we need to leave, we need to put him back in his cage. Right. You know, there'll be once or twice where he'll hop off our finger and like flap up to the top of the TV, but he's never gone up where we can't reach him. We've right. never had a point where we need to get out the door and we can't leave because we're chasing the bird to put him back in his cage. So he's right. very responsive and obedient. When we make it clear, no, it's time to go back in your cage. He just sits on our finger and lets us put him back in. So, so yeah. It's, it's, Quite the exact opposite of, of what right. we thought. We don't know he's gonna have all this freedom. He's gonna just be out of reach right. every minute Rebellious of the day, and it's and not the case no, at all. At all. So, so those are the, our our basic tenants of of having a tame bird. Again, it, it totally depends on your individual bird, their individual personality, their age, your situation, what you're comfortable having them do in your house. Um, this is just what's worked for us and what continues to work. So hopefully, some of you will find this helpful. And if you have any other questions about pillow or just birds in general that we may or may not be able to answer, <laughs> please leave them in the comments below. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Give us a like, please. Yeah, like. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.